Hey folks, how you doing? Tech Tuesday from the desk. Bench is over there. <laughs> that joke's gonna get old quick. Anyway, I mentioned last week about building a bird cam for the next couple videos, and we're gonna start on that today. Today's just gonna be the quick overview. I'll show you the website that you're gonna need to become familiar with. We will build it in the videos, but you're gonna want this website as a reference as you know, idea fodder for how to build your housing for the camera and whatever else. This is a really straightforward project. They're not going to be much easier than this one. The only possibility would be the difficulty, any difficulty in acquiring parts, which right now should not be an issue. It looks like Amazon is full stock on these, although you might need to wait a few days. So not that big of a deal. Let's head over to the website real quick and just talk about the website itself. It's mynaturewatch.net, which you can see up here at the top. I'll let this scroll by while I'm kind of going over it a little bit, but because you can just get the idea for just how simple this is. The build is straightforward. It requires simple tools. All you need is an external battery. Most of you probably have one already. To charge your cell phone while you're out and about that's all you need for power so really you're just going to pick up the raspberry pi zero w and the camera for the raspberry pi and that's it and you need a spare bottle if you want to build it this way to make the lens hood um not quite sure i love how this one did it just in the bottle it's really straightforward but yeah that's the the key to any of this stuff is the kiss principle Let's keep it stupid simple. <laughs> so yeah, you can see the iPhone or your phone in general actually acts as the interface and the control. So you connect to the Raspberry Pi as a hotspot and you can control the camera. There's plenty of how to make them videos. I love that picture even though it's sideways. To show you some pictures that have been captured from some people. My arch nemesis is the squirrel. <clears throat> right now I can't keep them out of my feeder. So yeah. But the, the site is a good resource. And again, I would recommend that you go check it out before we start building. You're going to come over and <clears throat> it's going to give you the parts list. I'll put the parts list in today's description of the basics that I would recommend that you pick up. Um, use your camera, different ways to set it up, how to control it via your phone. You can also connect to it with a laptop. I've been doing that quite a bit because I need somewhere to download all of the images at once rather than one at a time. Um, if you do it from a laptop or a computer, you can actually download all of the pictures that it took that day rather than on your phone just selecting one picture at a time. Um, another project which I'm going to look at doing in the spring is adding an RFID reader, which they have coined the term Freeder. So it's a feeder and a reader to read the RFID tags that are on some birds legs you can see the little pink ones right here if you think about it it's just like your contactless credit card it's the same type of thing you come close to this gray thing here which has a reader coil in it and it reads the data out of the chip that's in that little tag so it's pretty cool gallery of photos that have been taken from different views different cameras. Here you can see they're using the no IR, the no infrared cameras, which I actually have one and I'm thinking about building one that way as well. Some information about the project itself. Again, the forum here is phenomenal. If you need ideas on how to build your camera, how to contain it, you know, it's all there. So definitely want to take advantage of that. Again, to show you and I'll put these parts in the list the one thing I did in the description 
The one thing I did was I spied this camera mount on Amazon, and I really liked it. It was 10 bucks, I think. <clears throat> a little pricey for what it is. But because of the way the base is made, get my finger in there so you can see these mounts, these, <clears throat> these troughs here. I don't know what you grates, whatever you want to call them. It gave me a lot of different mounting capabilities to mount it this way and be able to tilt the camera to a position as needed or flip the whole thing over, mount it to a position as needed. <clears throat> My general concept for this one I'm building for someone is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery in the bottom. <clears throat> Contain this in a cube roughly the size of a Rubik's cube and be able to put it pretty much anywhere. Um, I talked about it a little in a previous video, but I started building my own version of this <coughs> using an ArduCam, which is a higher megapixel, and it uses a C-mount lens, so the lens just screws on and off, and I can change lenses to give a little more flexibility down the road. <coughs> we'll talk about in the build portion of it, and I'm just going to take just a quick minute here to talk about this. So let me disconnect this camera. So I have the two side by side. You're going to see two different Raspberry Pi Zeros on Amazon. This is the typical Raspberry Pi Zero W, right? Pretty straightforward. The one I would recommend, and it might take you a little bit longer to get the parts, is to get the WH version. Let me line these up. You can probably see the difference already. <laughs> the W H has the header. These pins. The standard W does not have those pins. I would recommend if you want to tinker with this that you get the header version. Um, one mod you're going to see off the bat is we're going to come through and we're going to put a switch on those two pins right next to my fingernail to shut this down properly. So you just push a button and it shuts down. The LED goes off. You can unplug it from the battery. The reason I say that is the zero, zero W, zero WH Raspberry Pi in general uses an operating system that's stored on the micro SD. It doesn't behave well when it's shut down dirty. That's my one complaint with this project. Um, but I looked and it is in the bug list to uh, provide shutdown scripts. We're going to do it a very simple way. The zero firmware, <clears throat> when it, two pins are shorted, it realizes it and does an orderly shutdown of the system. So it's a quick and dirty shutdown script. You don't have to do anything other than one line in, I think it's the config.txt file. I think it is. I don't remember exactly which. I think it's in the config file. And connect the pins. Once you do it, reboot. And you push the button, it shuts down. If you don't remove the power, you push the button, it starts back up again. <laughs> again, KISS principle. So yeah, that's kind of it for today. I'll put all the links down below. And then the next episode, we'll talk about the build. And that's it for today, guys. Be good, be well, wear a mask, stay smart, be strong, stay mighty. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.